Oh, oh, yeah. And she goes, no, that's nice, Dean. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another episode of Ask Your Aunties. I'm your host, Paz, and we have... I'm Shadow. So today, in today's episode, we're going to talk about the North Shore parties, the protests happening in Melbourne, and moving out into the big wide world. So, sis, do you want to start off with the party since I'm not there? Look, sis, I saw that the stories on Instagram on Sunday morning and I honestly, I didn't want to believe it, right? Like, I was looking at them and I was like, these fuckers are in Auckland. And then I, and then I saw further and I was like, that is way too many people to be in one place in Auckland and I guarantee you all those people are breaking their bubble and breaching COVID restrictions right now. So I I watched it again. I double checked. I looked on everyone's like who was tagged in the stories to see like what was going on. And yep, sure enough, it was a big ass party in Auckland, uh, pre-party in Central at an apartment. And then they obviously all congregated to one home out in Albany and the party where, like, I don't know specific numbers, but there was definitely, I counted definitely more than 50 people in the stories that I watched. Yeah, it did look like there was a lot of people. What I'm surprised about is, you know, the pre-party that you said happened at an apartment. I'm surprised that the neighbours didn't, like, call and complain about a noise or anything like that. If that was my neighbours, I would be, like, honestly, people think that I just look for internet clout and that I like to cause drama, whatever the fuck. First of all, I've got talent, and that's how I get my clout, bitch. I don't need to use your name. Second of all, if they were my neighbours in real life, I would be going over there being like, you are fucking idiots. You're selfish, disrespectful, have no, you know, uh, empathy or thought for anyone else that's living in Auckland who has sick grandparents, sick parents, you know, ill family members they can't go visit, you know, tonguies, missing out on births of like nieces and nephews or grandsons, granddaughters, and these people think that they're, you know, invincible enough to go and have like a big ass fucking party, like who the fuck do you think you are? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, like... Is an impart is that is this party that important that you would risk your health, your you know your family's health, and the community's health to party for a couple of hours and be on the piss? Like just go on fucking Zoom, chat to your mates, and have a drink. Like as okay, so I've got a grandmother who's who's immunized or what is it immunization immune system is. Yeah low if i had gone to a party like that and caught covid and then went back home to my nana she would be she would have died you know and i had a few of the family members of some of the people who went to the party actually coming at me saying oh bullying this you know suicide awareness that mental health this like don't weaponize mental health in this situation you guys were selfish you knew what the fuck you're up to so it's like yeah yeah exactly and like I just, I don't understand because I I think I saw, I read somewhere or saw somewhere that like one of the girls were coming out and saying like, do you know what you're saying to me? Like, do you understand like what it's going to do to my mental health and stuff? Did you think about the mental health of people that um, have been affected by COVID when you went to this party? People that are stuck in places where, you know, they can't even go home don't have a job, Uh, everyone's stuck at home, everyone is struggling with their mental health or or the space that they're in, and you think that you're special enough to go and party and then cry about it, like, no, darling, sorry. Yeah, nah, it doesn't work that way. We also had, like, um, a situation here where they were, like, the tradies were protesting in the city, and, like, it got really violent, and, like, the cops, I know, like, Obviously, cops have, like, a really bad rep everywhere you go. But they're still essentially doing their job. And the fact Mm. that you can, like, harm them like that, like, I feel like that's so not on. And, like, you're protesting for what? So you can have, like, a tea room to have your break in? Like, it's just fucking ridiculous. 
I saw some of those lockdowns too, so it's mostly on like TikTok and social media and you know, these these people who are protesting are the same people who are like, oh, um, you know, I'm anti-vax, you know, don't know what I'm putting in my body. And yet people at the protest were literally sorting up lines. Explain that to me. Explain. Yep. Doesn't make yep. sense. Because it you, doesn't... like, obviously you, sis, you, you live in Melbourne where the protest, oh, sorry, the lockdowns have been some of the harshest in the world. Tell me how this has affected you and your everyday life and how you live. Yeah, well, um, when I found out I was pregnant, um, we we didn't know COVID existed. And then literally like two months into the year of 2020, we're like suddenly there's COVID, you work from home, you're in lockdown. So it affected me quite a lot because it was my first pregnancy. Um, there's a lot of things I couldn't do. I couldn't you know have like a baby shower i couldn't do any of like my religious stuff and like everything had to be like downsized and like i only had to do it with like my parents because we live with them and like i couldn't celebrate you know this like i'm bringing life into the world and i couldn't celebrate anything and like my son has all he knows is lockdown and like we're opening up soon but I missed, I can't get that back. And like, I've missed out on so much and we've had deaths in the family. We haven't been able to travel overseas to see like our nieces and nephews being born and like, we can't participate in anything. So it, it like mentally, it, it is quite a lot, but people just don't realize because sometimes they're not affected by the same things as everybody else. Sometimes they're okay with being in lockdown or they're like okay with kind of always fighting the man about anything and everything. But you just, you kind of learn to live with it, but at the same time, it's hard. It is really hard. Sis. And, you know, even just touching on the fact that you couldn't even do something as simple as have a baby shower to celebrate the fact that you are bringing life into the world. Like that, I can't even imagine, you know, that must yeah. have been because those are the sorts of things you look forward to and that's those are the things that you kind of look forward to when you're pregnant you know doing doing the baby shower and having a gender reveal and um you know just things like that and not even being able to do something as simple as that is it's eye-opening I never thought in my lifetime I was actually saying this to my boyfriend before I never thought in my lifetime I would live through a pandemic I thought I'd live through a world war before I lived through like a deadly pandemic you know yeah um so we've actually had a few protests happen over here as well funnily enough i went to the gypsy fair on saturday um at anderson park in napier and yeah i was like why is no one wearing a fucking mask because down here in wellington like more more or less people wear masks and it's easier to spot someone not wearing a mask than someone wearing a mask you know what i mean so yeah i mean wait no it's like easier that they stand out because they're not wearing one. And yeah. back in Napier, like barely anyone wore masks. And I was like, what the fuck? And like, even at those protests in Auckland run by Brian Tamaki, which who, by the way, should be locked the fuck up. Um, yeah. It's just devastating because these people think that it's all about our freedom and, and blah, blah, blah. Well, at the end of the day, like you might not be alive to enjoy these freedoms had these restrictions not been put in place. So like stop being selfish. You're not the only one going through it. Exactly. And if everyone just followed what they were supposed to do, we would come out of lockdown so much more quicker. These numbers, like we have like 1,800 like cases today and 12 de deaths today. Like, so oh. obviously like the community, I understand we're tired of being in lockdown. But if you just follow what the health advice, then there would be less cases and then we would come out of this quicker. So you're just slowing down the proce pro process by going to protest parties, whatever. Like it's just, it doesn't make sense. From your point of view over in Australia, do you think what Jacinda Ardern did by snapping us into lockdown for four weeks when COVID was first around, do you think that that was a good idea? Um, I think so because like, I feel like you need to act quick because it spreads so quickly. So the fact that she did that, I think she saved a lot of lives. 100%. 100%. You know, half these people wouldn't even be around or alive to whine about everything that's going on. So, like, just shush. Just Exactly. I've done the best that they can with what we've got, you know? Yeah. And I think as well our government 
um, have provided quite a lot of support and a lot of alleviation for even myself being self-employed. Like we get tax breaks and well, not tax breaks, but like you know they they let us pay it off if we're not able to, which I think is really great because businesses and people are just really struggling at the moment. Yeah, like it's it is it's been hard for everybody. And, like, people being selfish and, like, saying they're not going to do what, you know, the health advice is, is just putting everyone in grief even more because now we can't move on or we can't progress until you do the right thing. And, like, I understand there's hesitation with the, like, vaccine and stuff, but would you rather not get vaccinated, get sick and pass away, or would you rather get vaccinated and be sick but still be saved? because a vaccine kicked in and helped you right like right we vaccinated throughout our lives like my son has had a few vaccinations for a whole different th- number of things and like why wouldn't i want to protect him obviously i'm going to get him vaccinated because i had the same vaccines and like i'm okay so i would want to protect him any way i can yeah there's a lot of rhetoric out there just about around the vaccines of like oh, it causes, like, autism and, and, and other things like that. But at the end of the day, like, we don't have polio or measles running as rampant as it was back in the days before these vaccines existed. And I would rather listen to someone who's studied and knows their shit than some idiot who just fucks up fake shit on YouTube, like conspiracy theories. Like, that's literally where people are getting their information from these days. And I think that the internet and the access to a lot of information has actually... I don't know. It's it's good, but it also comes with a really at a really high price where people are misinformed about things. Yeah, I agree with you. And like, like I think you raise a really good point. Listen to people that have the education to give you this advice, not mm-hmm. people that you know have so and so followers, and suddenly their word is like everything. The gospel when it's not it's not even true. Like there's this there's this woman, um, Tay's way. She's um, uh, Frank Win- Frank Winterstein. He's like a a rugby player over in yeah. Aussie. That's Samoan Samoan Afghasi, I think. And she's spread a lot of rhetoric about um, like fake rhetoric about vaccines causing autism and 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 things like that. When she has a a large following of people who are mostly people of colour, you know, and, and she almost, well, I think I think she actually got stopped from doing this, but she was going to go and do an anti-vax speak or, or whatever over in Samoa, you know, a place where medicine and healthcare is of lower quality than what we can receive over in Australia and New Zealand, right? And who's spreading that shit over in a country that's already susceptible to diseases, uh, and going to spread her shit over there. It's just, it's not, it's not help, it helping. And her, her um, credentials were she did some fucking online course for like one year about like holistic health. And she thinks that no, darling, no, sweetheart, you literally got your qualification from a fucking cereal box. You don't know shit. Yeah. No, no, like seriously. And this brings me to another point. I'm sorry to stray away from anti-vax, but pro-choice no, no. and like abortion. Go for I it. don't know if you have, like we have people that we know that are spreading all of these like misinformation. So their point of view is um, that you, like, you know, a life is a life and like abortion, there should be no such thing as, you know, you getting an abortion. Now, I don't think they understand that there's a number of reasons why a woman might want to choose abortion. It could be health reasons, like their health could be at risk, the unborn child's health could be at risk, or they've been raped, um, you know, subject to violence, things like that. Like, it's not always like, oh, I don't think I want to have this child. Like, there is other reasons that can be quite traumatic for a person to have to go through birth like they will spread all these things like oh um women shouldn't shouldn't um get abortions and like okay well if i was subject to rape or subject to domestic like 
violence so they this person has already taken the choice of my body away from me now you want to tell me that i no longer have a choice on what i want to do about the result of what happened to me so how is that gonna like help me in any way so it just really makes me really upset that people like want to take that choice away from women so, so I grew up in a Pentecostal Christian household, went to church every Sunday, you know, and, and growing up in that environment, I only knew like anti-abortion and anti, anti-LGBTQ, anti you know, so I've had to really unlearn all this shit and because like before, because of what my family and the church had told me, like I was almost scared into like abortions are wrong, like blah, blah, blah. And, and I really did used to think that, but because of what I was taught. Now, as I've grown up and I've come to learn about the world and, and, and things that happen, I've changed my stance. Like I'm fully like, girl, if you need an abortion, if you need to get it, then, you know, that that's your choice. It's your body. And like at the end of the day, I don't have a say because I'm not going to be there for that child. I'm not going to be the one that that gets up in the middle of the night with that kid or has to feed it or has to fork out money to pay for it, you know? So I don't think that anyone should have any right to say over what someone does with their body. So like, and I'm saying this because like recently there has been like a few like posts being made like with statistics like, oh, abortions impact, impact more mentally um, then like, um, like not, not having an abortion. And I was like, I don't think that really makes any sense because like, if this, this, this pregnancy did result from, um, you know, violence, I'll, I'll just use the word violence because it's less triggering, triggering. So if it did result from violence, now I have to deal with, you know, the result of the violence. I feel like that would affect me more than like, actually having a choice and being the boss of like my body and deciding okay i understand that this happened to me and like now i have a choice on what i want to do about it and mm. like i don't think it should be like you said up to anybody else to decide that for me no and because i can see over in america they're just all talk. oh sorry that's no, okay like they're all talk they they talk about it and they'll like raise awareness about it but they're not the ones to open up their wallet to help you raise this child yeah and i think what all people also fail to understand is there actually is a rigorous process to go through to even be allowed to get an abortion like you have to go right. and speak to a psychologist or someone you know someone in the mental health sector to make sure that you are in the right frame of mind and, and, and making a good decision for yourself so it's not just like you can walk in like a fucking doctor or like to go and get your nails done and be like, yep, I want an abortion, please. Like it's, it's, it's a process. Right. I didn't know and that. And it's not something I... that people just, yeah. Personally, I've never had one or I've, I've never had to have one before. Um, but I've been through it with some of my friends and it's, it's hard to watch them because, you know, these, these are women who don't necessarily actually want to give up this child, but they know in their mind that they are not fit enough or in the right frame of mind to be able to handle the responsibility, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that was just my little thing about it. Cause it just really makes me mad that we still have to have this conversation in 2021. Like, why is this still? Because it's mostly fucking like... men who are against it. Well, this is a woman that like really triggered me. And it's someone that I know, and I've been to like, school with them and like i'm just really appalled at the type of shit that is because this person is influential to young minds and i don't want to say more than that but like to think that this person has these ideas in their head about stuff like this and like they influence younger minds like what are you teaching to like our next generation right it's like the 21st fucking century, bro. Like, we don't live in those times anymore. We live in a time where it is hard to even get into a home these days. So people are really actually making a responsible decision by saying, actually, I can't afford this child. I can't, like, provide a stable, secure environment for them. So I'm going to, you know, go through with this. And I think in, in, in the biggest sense that that is the most selfless thing you can do. You know, is actually looking inside yourself and being like, no, I'm not fit. I'm not, 
stable enough to be able to raise a child. Yeah, and I think that's only your call alone to make. Yep. Yep. 100%. So in saying that, I feel like this brings us into like moving out into the big wide world because it, in a sense it's like becoming an adult. So what yes. would Yes. So how old were you when you moved out of home sis? Sorry? How old were you when you first moved out of home? I was I think I had just turned eighteen. Wow. And how was that? Yeah. How did you go about it? Did you find your own flat? Did you move in with your friends? Um, okay, so I was in Sydney and I had just finished school and I couldn't get a hex because you have to live in Australia for a certain amount of time and then they'll give you like hicks. Obviously, I'm not rich enough to pay like for university out of my own pocket. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I sat around for a while thinking like I had a job, but like I was thinking like, you know, what do I want to do with my future? Like, how am I going to navigate? Like, what am I going to do? So I applied for AUT and then I got in and then I just moved. I moved in with my... Um, uncle's family and then that was like horrible and then I moved in with my nan she took me in best nan ever oh, so she took me in and then so the first time I actually moved out on my own was when I moved in with um my husband and then we had a little like um little apartment in New Lynn and it was two bedrooms and <laughs> like the outside looked like the ghetto but inside it was like renovated so it was new <laughs> and, and I, like, it was good and like since then like I've I've lived in like different environments so like I've I've lived in a place where like I had to rent with like other people so I just rented a room and that was like really weird because we discussed it before how like the homeowner she used to live with us too and she used to go into my trash and like check that that one that crazy yeah. number oh yeah <laughs> i remember you used to ring me about her and be like oh bro she's been through my rubbish the weird fuck yeah it was so weird i was like who I does that? Remember that. <laughs> so, so yeah weird. but Put i think before you even oh. like decide to like leave or before you even decide to like move i think you should sit down and think do I have a job and does this job pay enough for me to survive on my own? So even if you move out with your partner, you need to hold your own. You can't rely on them to pay for everything. So I, that's what I did. Like I would yeah. sit down and be like, okay, this is how much I get a week. This is how much I think I can afford in rent. These are my bills. This is how much I think I need for food. So you just want to like categorize everything and like, make sure you have a little bit left over from paying everything so that if there's an expense that comes up that you like didn't account for that at least you have that there and like you're in a position where you're comfortable instead of you know kind of paycheck to paycheck like struggling like oh shit i can't eat today because i don't have enough money until next pay yeah yeah for laces like so i moved out when i was out? 16. i moved out of my parents house mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so I moved out of my parents' house when I was 16, but I actually moved over to my grandmother's house because it's, like, I'll be, I'll be honest and straight up, like, my parents were fucking controlling, like, they were super hard to live with. Um, I was 16, I had my own job, bought my own phone, bought my own clothes, paid my own school, like, I had to buy my own school uniform, all that sort of shit, so I already kind of had those responsibilities when I was 16, and... I kind of had to grow up really, really, really quick. Um, but on the flip side, my parents were still like, no, you've got to hand your phone into us at 8.30 at night so you're not on it all night and so you get some sleep. They were still controlling all my money and my bank account. Like I, like, I didn't have my own bank account until maybe until after I moved out of their house. So they had all my money and I did not learn fucking whatsoever how to save like because they were just – give me 50 bucks like here and there or like they'd be like no you can't spend any money this week because you've got to buy your new school uniform or you're going to pay for your school trip here or blah 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 so yeah they like essentially as soon as I got a job yeah I was paying for everything for myself so I had like no room to save um and once I moved out of home and moved into with my nana 
I had way, I had all the freedom in the world. So I, but I personally wasn't good with money. Um, like I didn't know how to budget. I would just, if I wanted something, I would just get it. You know, like I wouldn't account for other things that I might need later on in the week, like pads or something, you know, or tampons or something like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, I've really had to, I've really had to like unlearn that shit as well. Um, and really be an adult and budget and like save and like you know I've got my money like I've now I've got money in account that I cannot touch whatsoever because it's therefore like a complete emergency you know yeah wow and like Mc- think- and transferring transferring money for McDonald's and transferring money to get this new to get new clothes I, like that's not an emergency for me anymore so she's learning <laughs> anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think um like for me I didn't know how to budget either um I kind of was like okay like I get paid I don't know 500 a week and um rent is like I don't know 150 and then I've got to pay for my bus fare to get to work and I've got a you know food and then I've got like so it was kind of like Yep, I, I think I can do it. So I, I did struggle a lot um, as well, but like, cause I had to like work and go to uni at the same time because I, otherwise I wouldn't have a roof over my head. So I, I found it really difficult. Oh, and then yes. when I moved in with Nav, it was a little bit easier because he was working full time. So like the expenses were split and like, it just like kind of made it a little bit easier for me and then I only just recently started to like save and budget and like think about money in that way because for a long time I didn't I was like if I die tomorrow like what is my savings gonna do for me <laughs> such a bad way to think about money. <laughs> I thought that was me as well bro I'm like you know what spend now think about it later fuck it yeah, yeah. And like now, like, because I've got honor, I'm like, man, I actually need us to have money, like, in case he needs something. And like, I don't want to ever turn around and be like, no, you can't have that because mom doesn't have any money, you know? Yeah. So I don't know if that's spoiling him or not, but like, I just don't. I, I, I lived quite like, I don't, I don't want to say I was poor, but like, we didn't have like money like readily available all the time for us. And neither. I think that's why I'm really bad with money like I think same no same like um I don't know it was just always living kind of in survival mode for me that kind of put me in that frame of mind and I had to really unlearn that mode of survival because it's destructive and you don't like obviously you can progress in life but I didn't have enough to progress in life like in terms of like savings if I wanted to I don't know, like if my car broke down and I needed to get fixed, but I didn't have money for that just sitting there. Um, I do now, but yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't have before. And I think before you move out, I think you should have like some backup money because you have to like pay bond and stuff. Yep. Yep. I mean, when I moved out of home, sis, I literally had, because my mum and dad wouldn't let me take any of the furniture in my room that was theirs. So I literally left with a couple of rubbish bags full of clothes and that was me. And like, I've really had to like build up everything I own um, over time. And it did suck because there were times where say, like, I love having a smoothie for breakfast, right? And when I was cleaning, like I didn't have any of that stuff like we didn't even have proper cutlery bro like we, like we'd be opening our tin cans with a bloody sharp knife from like the, the meatworks oh and yeah just just like if I'd known what I know now I like when I was at school working I would have actually started to put things away every week like buy a dinner set here and there and maybe like buy a few towels every week uh, like a couple of towels every week to like start building up my collection um yeah. Yeah, that's something that I wish I'd known back then. So I'm building a house. So maybe I'll do like, a, because I'm going to buy everything new for the house. Um, because I feel like we deserve it from all the hard work we've done. So maybe I'll do like a shopping kind of thing for essentials and stuff like that. Um, and I'll like 
kind of record it and put it up for everyone to see. And I'll talk about like the building process and what we went through, savings and stuff. Please do, sis, because I think as well, like when I was 19, I had a I had an all good job. Like I was working in insurance. Um, I had a, quite a bit in my KiwiSaver because I've been working since I was like 11. Um, and I was actually in a position back then to get a $400,000 mortgage, you know, to, to buy a house. But stupid little me wanted to go to Auckland. Um, that's another story. But I don't think people actually realise that it's actually easy to start building up your KiwiSaver and just putting away like even just like 20, even just $5 a week, you know, just to go towards stuff to buy for the house, you know? Yeah, we have like, um, I don't know, many pe- I think many people don't know about like what we have, like we have Super in Australia, which is like KiwiSaver. And yeah. they have like a little like scheme with your Super where you can like um, have like a, you can take out like, I think 20,000, they've increased it to 50,000 now from your Super to put it towards your home. And you can have one where you can like um, contribute money um, instead of your employer contributing, you can contribute as well and you can increase wow. that quicker. Yeah, I didn't know about it, but like it's too late for me now. But if I knew about it when I first came here, I think I would have been contributing towards that fund because once you have as much as you need, you can take it out and use that for your deposit and the bank will recognize that as genuine savings. Yeah, so in New Zealand, we've actually got a scheme for first homes as well. Um, yeah which I actually think is quite good. So on top of your KiwiSaver, if you're getting your first home, you get $10,000. I think it's $10,000 for a couple, $5,000 individually. Don't quote me. I I think this is how it goes. And I think you get $10,000 each if you are building a new home. Oh, On top of your KiwiSaver. Wow. Yeah. That's like an extra $20,000. Yeah, well, we have that too, but we have like, um, if you're a couple, you get 10,000. And if you're just by yourself, you get 10,000. So like, you can't have double, if that makes sense. Oh, oh okay. So up, yeah, see, that. it might have changed since I last looked at it. Hey? Yeah. We're going to apply for that as well, because why not, right? <laughs> it's 10,000. Do it, girl. Do it. Yeah, we pay taxes. We, we should get it back. <laughs> Yeah, hard out, hard out. And I think even now, though, with like the way the housing market is, I don't, I, I understand why a lot of people do live at home with their parents still or still flat or, you know, because, bro, like, even just looking around Wellington, the houses in the city, like, you can get a two-bedroom apartment in the city for, like, 600 fucking dollars a week. Like, no garden, small as fuck, shoebox. Oh my that's God. just ridiculous. That's like someone's, it's like majority of someone's weekly pay. So you do have to resort to, you know, renting or flatting or, or still living at home because who can pay that on their own? That's a lot of money. Living. That's a lot. So much money. That's a fuckload. If you think about it, if you saved up a deposit, I mean, I know people like get overwhelmed when they think, oh, I gotta say for a deposit because it looks like it's a lot of money but in the long term your like um mortgage will most likely be like let's say 1800 a month and like you're probably already paying maybe more than a that month per- no that's cheap it's like that's what my mortgage will be. wow i'm moving to melbourne girl <laughs> <laughs> it's realistic here you can do so much <laughs> Yeah, and, and I think as well, like, people don't understand that if you do try and get a mortgage, the money you pay every week, that's going back into your own pocket, essentially. You know, you're, you're, you're going to own the home, and it essentially it's going to increase in value, so you're going to make profit off it as well. Whereas if you're renting and you're paying to a landlord, that pay their mortgage, and you don't see any of that, you know? No, nothing, like... It, yeah I just if I knew this before then like because whenever you think about owning a home it just it's so overwhelming to think about that and like oh, I gotta save we're gonna do these applications and do this and that but yep. if you have the time research about it 
and see all the benefits because I think it's really good to have your own home because obviously it will go up in equity. If you decide to sell, there might be a little bit more money in your pocket. Um, and you know, you have a place to call home. It's all yours. You can do whatever you want to it. And it's something that like, I didn't think I wanted ever, but like now that I'm an adult now, I'm like, okay, like I, I do want, you know, to have a home where I can keep it however I want it and, you know, have all, you know, nice things and stuff like that. So it's always good to research and get a broker. They don't cost any money. Brokers are so good, bro. That's how we got our good, like a good deal for our loan, you know. Um, and we would never have got because they offered us like I think three hundred and thirty grand in the beginning, but then we went through a broker and they got us four hundred. Wow! So that opened up our options even more as well. Yeah, like sis, just even thinking about back in maybe like nineteen ninety nine, two thousand ish, when it was just my mum and I. Um, she was on I think the minimum wage at that time might have been like nine ish dollars an hour, maybe ten. Yeah. And we were paying $80, $80 a week for rent for a three-bedroom, like, it was a cute house. Like, it wasn't anything flash, but it was cute. It was our home, and $80 a week. But then in comparison, right, the minimum wage over here in New Zealand is, what, like, 20, 20 bucks now? And rent is, like, almost fucking 10 times what it was, like, 20-odd years ago. It's just not matching up. Like, the cost of living and employment is just not matching up nah. anymore. No, no, it's not. It's gross. It like actually makes me sick. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even. Wow. <laughs> I'm just like wow. Amazing. I think over here it's like cheap. The rent is yeah. cheap. Um, and the pay is good, but it's not the same everywhere in Australia, though. That's the thing. So you just got to decide where you want to say. Like Sydney is like kind of yeah. like Auckland. I feel like it's expensive. I would never live in Sydney, bro. Never, ever in my life. I would because, like, my friends are there and, like, I have more friends there and, like, my my favourite cousins are there and stuff. But, like... True. But, like, realistically, like, it it's not, not good for me to live there. Melbourne has given me a lot of opportunities and I've been able to do so many things that I didn't really think I could do. So now it's all about, like... I guess you really don't know how to adult until you like put into situations where it's like tough. It's, it's kind of just a you either sink or you swim. <laughs> yeah, and like no one really teaches you that. Like it's a it's a big adjustment having to live on your own because you're responsible for yourself and like you have to make sure you budget and you discuss with whoever you're living with. You know, if they're going to, can you trust them to contribute, you know, equally to all the bills that come through? Because sometimes you can't predict how much your bill is going to be. And exactly. that's, yeah, that's why I, I say again, it's good to have that money to fall on if you need to. Because I mean, like, honestly, sis, when I, like, even after I finished uni and moved back to Napier, I worked at Anatolia um, and I was flatting with my friends. Um, I was living fucking week to week, bro. Like, literally, well, pay my rent. It was half my pay almost. Uh, and then I would have, you know, maybe like fifty, sixty dollars worth for food, and then maybe like thirty dollars for the week for petrol, and then maybe I'd have like fucking ten dollars left at the end of the week to get a fucking scrumpy and a packet of durries, you know, like, well, not even ten dollars, maybe like thirty bucks, and and you know that would be like my um my treat and I knew I was like you know what fuck this kind of life you know this is just not it like I'm literally living to fucking work and yeah it was a struggle for a while now I don't know if you want to um discuss this but you have really interesting stories of when you lived with other people um would you mind sharing some bro I've got I've lived with so many fucked up people it's not even funny <laughs> which one should I start with um, I guess the first shitty experience you had living with other people. Oh, fuck. It was in Auckland. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> some people, uh, well, they essentially, like, took me in, okay, because, like, I got kicked off my fucking tour. Um, 
I was literally, I'd moved out of my home because I thought I was going to be on tour for a whole, I think I was going to be on tour for like eight weeks. So I moved out of my flat. Well, I was actually living with my auntie at the time. Ended up in Auckland, and once I got to Auckland, I got kicked off the tour because they said I wasn't making enough ticket sales, which is fucking bullshit, um, by the way. Um, so they said, well, kindly took me in. Once I got a job, I got a job within, like, a week, and I was working again, and I made a deal with them, and I was like, look, you know, I appreciate what you guys have done for me. Um, I'm going to back pay the rent from, like, a week, you know, the couple of weeks that I was there you know, after I got kicked off the tour, which was cool. I did that. Um, I came down to Wellington for like three months for work. I still was living in Auckland. Um, and I was still paying my rent up there. Anyway, sis, like came back after three months. People had been sleeping in my room. Like people had gone through my room. Um, and it was just a really toxic environment. And like after that, and I was like, nah, fuck this. Anyway, we started to like, because my partner ended up moving up to Auckland with me and living at this place. So we decided, look, we work on the North Shore. We're just going to move over to the North Shore to this place that we found. Um, And in the end, bro, they were, like, screaming at us, saying, like, oh, we aren't going to be able to afford this house anymore. Like, rah, 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 rah. Like, and I was like, bro, like, we've got to, sorry, but we've got to do what's best for us. Like, you can't just bully us, bully us into staying here to help you out financially like that's not our like this you guys were living here before we even came here you know and I just felt a little bit yeah backed into a corner so they started making up shit about me saying like oh um she never paid her rent blah 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 and I was like are you fucking serious I was paying my rent there when I was like in Auckland well I was down in Wellington for three months also paying rent down here like don't you oh bro it was it was just toxic and like after that yeah I lived with a couple of more people and it just yeah Auckland just wasn't for me bro you know uh, the people up there are just so weird and too I don't know very judgy and like materialistic people you know because like even though like what I do and I like to have nice things and shit like I'm still a budget bitch like I'll still like I'll still eat noodles and shit for dinner if I have to, you know, like, it doesn't bother me, but these people were starting to say, like, oh, she, all she does is, like, eat noodles, and, like, they were just talking shit about me, bro, and I was like, are you fucking serious? Like, I don't, it was just a whole thing, sis. It, like, why it was does actually it a really traumatic experience to me. Why does it matter to you? I'm, at least I'm not starving, like, hello. I don't, and, and another thing, sis, like, I was really struggling when I lived in Auckland. Like I, I made enough money, but it was just a really expensive place to live. Like it cost us, it cost us one hundred and sixty dollars to fill our car up every week, and yeah, I don't have parents to fall back on. Like if I needed like twenty bucks to borrow or something, because they wouldn't give it to me, you know. But I've grown up since then. You know, I've learnt a lot, and yeah. <laughs> wow. And what's the most? I guess. Is that the most fucked up thing that's happened to you living with people? In terms, oh, okay. So after I actually moved out of that house, oh, the one that I was talking about, that, and we moved to the shore. Yeah. So after maybe like four months, they found out where I lived. And they were oh like coming over to try and beat me up. What? And they were like, give us our money. You owe us like thousands of dollars. Yeah, bro. Yeah, like literally. They were like, you owe us thousands of dollars. She brought like her and her fucking dog mates over to my house and like tried to beat me up, bro. Like, okay, no shit. Like, I scr- I wasted all four of them. Like, one at a time, I was like, duff, 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 duff. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my house, bitch. Don't you ever fucking come around here anymore, cunt. Like, oh. <laughs> Oh, but ser- no, but seriously, sis, but, and, like, I think after that, I sort of came, became a little bit more, like, wary of people in general and, like, who I was moving in with, because I can't, like, at this stage, I would rather save for my own home than, like, live in an $800 a week rental, okay, like, that's just the tea, but what about you, sis, what's your fucked up, like, have you lived with anyone fucked up other than the lady who dug through your rubbish? Um, yeah, with family, like, um, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was, it was hard because, um, they would like report back to my parents and like lie about a lot of things, 
and then they would like talk shit about me and like treat me differently to what their kids were being treated as and like it did affect me quite a bit and I just had enough and I was like I can't do this anymore like I can't live like this and I went to my nana's house and I told her what was happening and she's like fuck that just come here bring all your shit and just come here it doesn't matter if you have to sleep in the same bed as me we'll just make it work and I was so grateful that I had my nan and that like she honestly saved me like she really like she's an angel like I can't thank her enough or do like I just can't like she's just oh like I just had such a terrible experience there because like like the kids like we all were kind of like around the same age and like they had freedoms that I didn't and I'm older than them like just by like a couple months but like still like why am I being treated differently and like why are you watching me per se like a hawk like you're just waiting for me to fuck up in some way and like they'd report back to my parents and talk all this shit but my parents they were smart enough not to like believe everything that was being told to them and like my nan like made sure yeah. i was okay like literally i had a big ass suitcase and i got on a bus now into my nan's house oh, was this yeah. across auckland this was in auckland yeah oh sis. Yeah, luckily, like, my nan was, like, two bus rides away, so it wasn't, like, too bad. And, like, you know how, like, small I was back then. <laughs> so I had, like, this fucking big-ass suitcase. Tiny. And 10 million bags, no other house. Probably no. heavier than you. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't have any friends that had, like, cars or anything. And, like, I just kind of, like, wanted to leave straight away. I so, like, I... Yeah, like, I went... I went back, yeah. I packed everything. I'm sure I left a few things. I just packed whatever I could see and I just left. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. But you can learn from those experiences. Yeah, and that's why, like, that kind of brings me back to, like, the housing crisis issue where, you know, people aren't actually able to afford their own spaces anymore. So they're having to live in, like, these toxic as fuck environments sometimes where they yeah. literally can't get out or don't really have anywhere to go. I remember you telling me, bro, that at, when we were at uni that you had to sleep, like, with your nana. And, like, that made me so sad, bro. Like, even just thinking back. But at the same time, I'm like, nan, love you. Like, yeah, my name would do was... the same, bro. My name would be like, okay, well, you can just sleep in my bed then. Fuck it. Yeah, and she loved it. Like, she would, she's so cute. If I went out at night, she would, like, you know, with, like, um, Livy in them, she would, like, wait. <laughs> until I got home and then she would sleep. I'm like, oh my god, you're waiting for me? She's like, yeah, I can't sleep when you're not here. I'm like, oh, so cute. <laughs> yeah, she's oh, cute. Nene. Yeah, and she was like one of the first ones to like meet Nav and like she would always like, <laughs> she would always like make food and like make him eat it. <laughs> she's oh. cute. She hasn't met my son yet, so I'm like really trying to like, you know, it's open <gasps> Come on, come meet him. See, and that's what sucks about these this whole lockdown thing. Just, hey, it's like your nanny, she hasn't even met your son yet. That's like that's sad. Yeah, she'd love sense. him. I know. She like we video call her. She's got a little phone that she can, you know, vibe call us and put on video. So <laughs> so we just do that. People so still can... use Viber? Yeah, I vibe call like um my auntie who's in Fiji, so I can video call her. She she needs to see my son every day. Aww. Every day. And when we don't call, she's like, oh, you didn't call me yesterday. <laughs> oh, beauty. Yeah, so, like, my family, like, we're close so, like that. Like, I just love them so much. And, like, I'm so glad I have such, like, amazing women in my life. Because my nanny's strong. She's out, so sis. I do, too. I love, I love my nan, too. Your nan's funny. My nan's my mum. <laughs> cute. The other day she goes to me, so when are you gonna go and watch that stink mick? I was like <laughs> What? Did you just say that? What the fuck man? Oh I might even wait and I might even insert that clip in into into that little bit after that because it's funny as fuck and I filmed it on Snapchat. <laughs> oh my god, yes, please. I didn't even make her say it. She just says that shit now. She's hilarious, that's so funny. I know, and I always go up to her, like, and I go, oh, oh, yeah. And she goes, no, that's nice, dear. And I'm like, oh, 
Oh but my no, God. seriously, like my nan, she she was another person who saved me as well, sis, because living with my parents, it was very like abusive, very controlling, how I said before. And like if I didn't have my nan's house to move in with, like I I don't know where I would have gone. And like even just even just little things like having dinner cooked for you every night, that's such a big thing we do not take advantage of or do not appreciate enough when we're at home either. Oh yes, I have dinner is cooked now and love it oh, yes but like we do cook sometimes um because my dad has recently um wanting he wants to be healthy so he's like wanting to eat like salads and stuff that is so not my dad like i don't know what's wrong with him but um he's kind of <laughs> like <laughs> and yeah i was like are you all right but he's like yeah i just saw something online about being healthy and i'm like okay well you do you, man. So I just cook, like, easy stuff. Because Nav's not picky at all. He'll eat whatever I cook. So it's good to not have picky people to cook for because it's fucking hard. Hard out. Like, honestly, we, my boyfriend, if he, if he could eat chicken nuggets and chips or, like, just hot chips every night, he wouldn't even care. <laughs> oh, my God. That's pretty easy. Like, I feel like it's very hard to... I'm like, no, we need a feed. Yeah, it's hard to cater for people that, like, are picky and, like, won't eat, like, so many things and then you, like, kind of get stumped on, like, what to cook because, oh, they won't like that or oh, that's too hot, that's too, like, salty, whatever. And you're just like, fuck, just eat what I'm making, man. Like, just – and my husband, even if it's disgusting, he'll still eat God, it. He'll be like, oh, yeah. babe, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we, like, love, like, we love so non-fussy eater. Oh, yes. My son is a non-fussy eater as well, so I'm glad. So he'll just eat anything? Oh, yeah. Did you see the photo yesterday? Of him in his high chair? Yes. Oh, wait. He looks so cute, bro. He hard out looks like you. Really? I think he does. Oh, thank he's got you. Your eyes, I, girl. I oh, yeah. He's got my eyes, definitely. I, like, made satay chicken with rice. And I gave him a spoon mm. and he threw the spoon on the floor and ate it with his hand. I'm like, like a true Indian. Good job. <laughs> oh, I love that. And no, he just always sees us eating with our hands. So he's like, why am I eating with a spoon? Get. <laughs> I can eat my hands like y'all. <laughs> yeah. So do you have any other like tips? For anyone that's wanting to move out of home first. I think is when you decide to live with friends, I think you need to be cautious. Um, it can ruin friendships. Um, yeah. at, no matter how good your relationship is with your friend. Like, I feel like you don't really know a person until you live with them because, like, there are certain habits that you only see at home. And, like, same goes for, like, my... I would give the same advice for relationships like before you like I don't know propose and you know think about marriage and stuff I think Move you should live together. yeah yeah because then you'll see yeah. exactly what you're going to be dealing with on a daily basis like it was a big adjust adjustment for me living with my husband because we we both have like habits that we don't like and like you kind of have to compromise and like you know like your cleanliness might not be on the same level like what you think is tidy might not be tidy for somebody else so like it can ruin friendships it can ruin relationships so you need to kind of put those things into consideration as well and like and not to move out in haste if you move out in haste there could be like you know you could struggle you could live paycheck to paycheck you might be short on money and stuff like that so i think that like it's yeah. a big decision if you can stay at home for as long as possible i fucking recommend it bro like unless you came come from like a fucked up house like me and you have to get out like if you can wait and if you can stay your parents pay a little bit less and save some money i it's not a bad thing like people people look down on those who still live at home like within in their 20s and stuff but that's the new way of the world you know because fuck half the houses have been bought up by all the boomers and <laughs> it's hard to get into the housing market 
Well, yeah, I'm an example of that. I live with my parents and I would not be able to save up for this deposit if it wasn't for them. So, and I wouldn't have coped as well as I did post-pregnancy if it wasn't for them. So I am so grateful that I have supportive parents who can be there for me when I need them. So yep. like, if you have that opportunity, take it. Why not? 100%. Like if I, if I had supportive parents, you know, and they weren't the way they are, um, I mean, <laughs> I probably would still be living at home, saving up to buy a house, you know, but now at the moment, I flat saving up for a house, you know, so whatever and works for you is like, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And like, even when you were saying before, like about not like learning about people's habits and stuff like that, when you actually live with them, you know, like I was brought up, I had to clean the house, like deep clean, dust everything down, clean the bathroom, clean the toilet, vacuum my whole room, like the whole house basically. And like clean my room all out ready for the next week um yeah it was hard like especially up in Auckland bro like my flatmates wouldn't even like we had like rubbish bags down the side of our house and I fucking I could not stand it like it was fucking disgusting and like even when I drove past because I, I didn't drive past on purpose I had to drive past one day um even when I drove past maybe like a year later the rubbish bags were still fucking there yeah. Hell no, like that's just a recipe for rats, bro. <laughs> like we had, we had lizards and rats living in our backyard. It was bleh, bleh. nah. <laughs> yeah, even even just little things. Okay, like I'm gonna give people an example. Even just little things like doing the like doing your recycling and your rubbish properly is like such a big help in the long run. Like that's something that I wish I never let happen at my old house because. Like, in the end, it just got so overwhelming with, like, rubbish bags that it was just not even funny anymore. And, like, I lived with proper adults, so, like, they were in their 30s, and they would not even, like, go to the dump or do things like that. Whereas, like, I grew up in a house, like, we would do a dump run every, like, month, you know? So it was it was actually quite hard adjusting to a new environment and, like, a, a new way of how people lived. Cool. Well, if so be anyone... for that, guys. Yeah, <laughs> has any tips that we may have missed please like write it down below so if anyone's moving out they can take in these things into consideration because i feel like you know when you want to move out it's so exciting yeah, and you're like, oh i just want to go and like i'll be fine but like you need to think about these things it's really important so that you benefit yourself and you don't struggle so yeah please leave it down below because i'd love to see you know what everyone else kind of considers one before they move out and once they're in their homes well thank you guys for tuning in today to our little podcast if you want to follow us and keep up to a date with us we're on facebook twitter instagram at ask your aunties uh we've got some other podcasts available on our youtube and spotify that you can go back and listen to and yeah, also let us know if you've got any tips for moving out or um, finding a home. Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. We've got our personal Instagrams um, as listed below on the screen. And yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Bye.